What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fluffy Flamingos. It's been a minute. I've got some new tattoos, as you might be able to see here. I'll show you guys those at the end if you guys are curious to look at those and see what I got. I'll even give you a little backstory on them. Today, though, we've got bigger fish to fry. We've got a good plot to this episode. We're going to be talking about my top five favorite apps for magic. For those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, the magic community sells magic tricks, right? They'll come up with an effect. It could be like card or coin or your grand grandpa's tombstone disappear kind of thing. But also sell apps. I'm a huge lover of the apps that they put out because they can they can accomplish things that are literally impossible without them. They can accomplish things that are so out of the box, so undoable, um, that they just create a new type of magic. I love this new genre that we're coming out with. We're gonna be going from five to one, least favorite to favorite, and um, I will have some performances to show you that I've done personally. Um, I haven't performed all of them on film yet, so... And then as well, I will be putting in the description box below the trailer for each each effect so you can see more into it than what I'm saying you have some background at each trick I'll tell you how much every effect is um, like how much you have to purchase and then as well as where you can get it as well alright guys number five is transference transference that's such a weird word transference transference this is $20 on Illusionist. What a great effect. I love this one. It is number five simply because it's not really an app per se. It is a series of scripts that allows you to make the spectator become the magician. Two main methods and both of them beyond easy to do. Uh, if you're a beginner, this is a must have. This is something that you need to incorporate into your show or into your street magic. This is like, anytime, anywhere kind of thing, and it's perfect. Just extremely easy, it's cheap, and it gets really amazing reactions because you're giving the audience the cards. You're making an audience member do a trick on you, mind reading no less, and it's spectacular. Four on the list, $60, this is Diverter. This is an actual magic app, the rest of them will be. Diverter is an app for iOS, whereas Transference is like scripts, so it's for either either phone, Android or iOS. Now, I myself have an iPhone, so I can vouch for all these apps because I can tell you that how amazing they are. However, I don't have any sole Android apps on this list, specifically because I don't have one. But this app is great for making the most impossible random situation. Imagine telling a spectator, or even a crowd of spectators, that they can pick a card out loud at random, no forces. Then they all accumulate a phone number at random, right? Let's just say it's the same area code, but they all come up with the numbers. You call that number on your phone, and a stranger obviously will answer the phone on the other side, and you ask them to think of a card, right? Slowly, like, let's build a suit, a color, let's pick a, a value. And they're thinking of the exact same card that the audience picked at the beginning. That is Diverter. This also will be found on Illusionist. I think all of them are. All but one will be found on Illusionist, and I'll tell you which one that is in a minute. Okay, next one on the list. Number three, Cypher, $20. Love this trick. If you guys are into cracking codes or mind reading, finding out like uh, pin codes and, and like astrology signs, birthdays, this is perfect for that. I absolutely love this trick. You really get to dive deep into finding out information about your spectator. Using nothing but your calculator, you can find someone's bank pin, their phone pin, uh, passwords, birthday, astrology signs. It's pretty much endless. You have hundreds of possibilities. And the best part is that Cypher is hiding in plain sight. It's organic and simple. One thing I hate is when you're doing magic and they just can't grasp what the plot of this trick is. I don't understand what you're trying to gain. This is just straightforward and simple. Hey guys, next one up on the list, number two, also from Illusionist, $20, Tempest. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this trick is one of my go-tos. It does require a bit of a setup, but we talked about this in a previous video for stacks, specifically the Mnemonica stack video, where we I showed you the performance in that video. I'll show you one more time in this one. Essentially, you have a shuffle deck of cards inside a box. Your spectator will think of a card and use the, the spinner on the timer on the iOS clock app to pick a number at random. That number that they choose, you never touch anything. As they deal the cards out, their card will be in the number of the position that they spun to. This is, in my opinion, the strongest any card at any number there is. Queen of Hearts? That's my favorite card. I think that's the one we chose earlier. Okay, so the, the whole point of this trick is to um, eliminate influence, right? Good. So. If you were to think of a card between one and, or of a number, between one and 10 in your head right now, you got one? Okay. Were you thinking of either three or seven? Yes. Yes, seven? Three? Okay, so reason I ask is because 67% of the population tend to pick those numbers, three or seven, so you fell in that category, right? So magicians lean towards statistics, they influence people, marketing is all about influence, right? So you know it's real, it's out there. So this is to eliminate any influence that I could have on you, right? So if I if I take this and I spin it once, we get say it all out two. two, and then if we spin it again, we get <laughs> yeah, that was not the point. But could you spin this once, and we'll just see what we get? Eleven. Cool. And you you said Queen of Hearts, right? And you chose the deck that you wanted. They're all shuffled differently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take a look over here. You said number 11. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You said Queen of Hearts, right? Yes. And you, free choice. Like, I could not influence you to pick it. Flip it over. What do you got? Queen of Hearts. Show the camera. Oh, what the? And they're, they're all different, right? They're all in a shuffled position. There's no way I could have known. Yeah? <laughs> 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 right. It's just impossible. It's impressive. Absolutely at random. All the variables that go into this trick just make it harder and harder to believe it's true. This was a really close tie for number one. There's two main differences between this trick and the actual first place effect. But this one... It's just, it's clean, it's fair, and it's easy. That's what I love about all these apps. They're meant to be easy. And most importantly, they're fooling as fuck. Part of my language, but this one gets everybody every single time. Okay guys, the last trick, number one, this is Earworm. This is $65 just on the app store. Perfect trick. Love this trick. Just, just watch, you'll thank me later. So I got the song. I'm gonna lower the volume all the way. Okay, so we don't know what's playing. But I got a song in my head, it's stuck in my head, and I just put it out there on this phone, on YouTube. And what I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna make a song together. Okay, so I want you to think of a beat in your head. Just kind of start laying the groundwork for a song, okay? And once you got a beat down, I want you to think of a melody. I want you to think, once you got the name of your song, I want you to tell me what it is. Or, We'll make, it, we'll make it more secretive, but do you have a song in mind already? Okay. I'm going to have you do it. I'm going to use my notepad here. You can make a new note. Uh, could you just type the name of your song and say by this artist, right? And whenever you're done, I don't want to see, but just lay it down, face down, on the table. Right? Perfect. Okay. So I haven't seen the song. You got one in your head. I got one stuck in my head. Uh, so what was the song that you were thinking? By who? By, by. by Maroon Five. Memories by Maroon Five. It's a good song. Uh, can you turn up the volume on your phone? Don't look at it yet, but just turn up the volume. Come closer. Can you hear that? Wait a bit. You can see that it's playing your song. So what was it about this app that got into number one? It has 
multiple methods, which is so nice because you can perform this two, three times in a row and they'll never guess the method because you can use a different one every time. It's perfect, hides in plain sight. The other amazing thing about this app that beats everything else is that you use a borrowed phone. The kicker ending does not even use your phone. It uses the spectators. Simply, you have a song stuck in your head, you ask to borrow the spectator's phone, and you type in the name of your song on YouTube and let it play with no volume. The spectator then thinks of a song, and at a drop of a hat, you turn up the volume on the phone, and it is exactly the song that they're thinking of. To further the plot, once you've written your song down, have it playing with no volume, you can leave it on the desk and not touch it at all. After that, it is completely out of your hands, they do the rest of the work. Best part, it can be any song ever made. I've had some of the most obscure songs given to me and it works every time, 100% of the time. I've even had people write it down for confirmation and they've spelled it wrong. They've put typos in the way that they wrote the song and artist and it still got it right, still worked 100%. One of the methods requires them to tell you what the song is and then the second method might be that they don't even tell you at all. It's so power, it's that powerful. If you get that app, which I absolutely promise you, you'll love if you get it, read the performance tips because I didn't know I needed to read that and then I ended up messaging the creator of the app who told me to go in that section and told me all the answers anyway. So if you don't wanna look foolish, read the, the performance tips, it's a lifesaver. These five apps are constant go-to routines for me. Day to day, I'll whip out my phone, I'll perform Earworm, I'll do Diverter. These apps are just absolutely perfect to just mind boggle anybody that you come across. They're easy, they're versatile, and of course, fooling. If you don't believe me, Go get it yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this was inspirational, that it was able to help notify you of what else is out there in the realm of magic. And I hope that it even inspires you to go get some of these effects. Um, I absolutely have loved working with these apps and being able to show the audience what I'm capable of. Before this video is over, I did promise you guys I'll show you my new tattoo so you guys can see what's on my body. Not that you guys asked, but I know some people are gonna be curious and I, I'm pretty new to all this new ink and stuff, so figured I'd show you guys. Okay, I'm gonna move this down so you guys can see my hand. So this is my most recent tattoo. It's the Loch Ness Monster. That says, stay weird under it. I absolutely love this. I'll give you a story about it real quick. Essentially, when I was in elementary school, I was in an accelerated program called PACE, and they asked us to do a paper on something supernatural and convince the audience either that it's true or that it's not true. And I gave compelling reason to believe that Loch Ness Monster is real. And this led me on a big path of really enjoying mythology and uh, paranormal things, supernatural, superstition. I love that kind of stuff. So this is just a big part of my life. I super love that criteria. And I do think that it's made me a much weirder person. So that's why I got this one. Here are the podcast logos of both my podcasts. We have Bleeding Hearts, which we just uploaded an episode today. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. It's called um, Addicted to Sadness with my good friend, Jerem Jones. And then here we have the podcast logo for Dead Rent. And this one, I'm I'm thinking I'm just gonna erase all the episodes and repurpose it because my co-host disappeared and I haven't uploaded anything lately. So I'm thinking we're gonna remake this podcast and revamp it. That's it, have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Fluffy Flamingos.